installment thereof, we will switch gears and uh, head down to um, Elevation Church in Charlotte, North Carolina, to take a look at a new blog post posted by Stephen Furtick, where, once again, Stephen Furtick kind of misses, like, the whole point of Scripture, and uh, we'll take a look at uh, his latest Missing the Point. Time for a Stephen Furtick update. that selective hearing is an important aspect of your Christian walk? Well, <laughs> Stephen Furtick apparently does. And the weird thing is this, that he's kind of right, and he misses the whole point. It's kind of hard to explain. And the reality is you're going to have to listen to the whole segment to get exactly what he's getting at here. But let me kill the music before I start singing again. Do, 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 do. All right, whew. That was close. Okay, so uh, without any further ado, from the Stephen Furtick blog, the, the name of the blog post, by the way, is Keeping Out the Doubt. Keeping Out the Doubt. And um, so this is a little segment from one of his um, <clears throat> sermons uh, fr- on the Sun Stand Still series. And you're going to find yourself agreeing to a point with what he's saying, but trust me when I tell you there's a punchline here. And you have to actually kind of get the whole thing. And since I've listened to it, I know where what the punchline is and where he's going. You know, listen carefully. <clears throat> Here's Stephen Furtick. If you were to go upstairs in my house, which I'm just going to be real honest with you, ain't real likely to happen. <laughs> I don't like to take people upstairs because that's where you can let things get a little messy. If you're going to entertain people, you get a couple rooms for that. And then you do what you need to do in the rest of the rooms and keep the door closed. In the upstairs portion of my house, there's actually signs on most of the doors that have been constructed by my five-year-old son, Elijah. And the signs say things like this. No penguins allowed with a big X and a picture of a penguin. Now, they don't actually say no penguins allowed because he can't actually write the letters yet. But if you were to ask him to interpret the tongues that are written on the signs, he'll tell you that they say no penguins allowed. And all over the doors of our house are signs telling the penguins to keep out. And there's actually a funny little story I like to tell about. One day, Elijah asked me to help him make a sign. And I was helping him draw the sign. And we drew a picture and and then put an X through it. And... uh, and then I, I wrote something on the sign. I said, keep out. This means you. And I put it on the door. And uh, I said, who, who does that sign refer to? And he said, it refers to you. My son actually, helped, actually requested my help to construct a sign to keep me out of the room in my house I paid for. <laughs> now, as I was thinking about your faith and your life and the things God has called you to do in your vision. Okay, that's the important part. It, it happens so quickly. 
so quickly that if you weren't paying attention, you would have missed it. Let me back the audio up just a smidge. Listen to what he's saying, because this is the difference between agreeing with him or thinking that he's totally missed the point. Here, let me back this up. Here we go. So I was thinking about your faith and your life and the things God has called you to do in your vision. Your faith, your life, and the things that God has called you to in your vision. Ah, we're talking about direct revelation here. Not talking about what God's word says, but direct revelation. You know, there ought to be rooms in your spirit and rooms in your heart with a sign posted to let the devil know, to let the doubts know, let the fears know, let the haters know. Keep out. This means you. Okay, now, this is the weird part. I agree with him if what we're talking about only is the written word of God. Okay? For instance, the devil comes along and says to you something like, do you really believe that Jesus was born of a virgin? Really? Come on. Right? That's Did God really say? That's kind of how he does it, right? Did God really say that Jesus was born of a virgin? Yeah, it's, 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 see, it, it, that's where the door, the, the sign and the door really comes in handy. Oh, yeah, Satan, I'm sorry. You and your little doubts and your deconstructions of what God's word says, you're not welcome here. Keep out. God's word says, it is written, that Jesus was born of the Virgin Mary. Plain and simple. Get out of here. Okay, or the devil comes along and says something to the effect of, <clears throat> yeah, um, you and I, let's, let's have a little conversation. And um, <clears throat> you and I both know that, boy, you are a wretched, miserable excuse for a Christian, right? Come on, level with me here. You really think... That you, that you are somehow moral or, you know, that you're making any improvement in your sanctification. Because here's my tally sheet of the things that you've screwed up on just in the past 24 hours. And whoa, look at some of these. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're, you, you realize you have no hope on the day of judgment, don't you? Because, I mean, seriously, I'm going to be there prosecuting you and I've got this on you and this on you. And you, yeah, the, the, according to my tally sheet here. You are quite the sinner. So you, do you really think you're a Christian? Do you really think? Yeah, so in, in a situation like that, Luther's advice from his commentary on the Galatians comes in very handy. You say to the devil something, the effect of this. Yeah, that's funny that you would say that because Jesus himself said that he didn't come for the well that he came for the sick he didn't come to save the righteous but he came to save sinners and thank you satan for pointing out to me that i'm a sinner because that lets me know that jesus came to save me and i trust that what he's done on the cross dying and rising again is for my salvation so get lost satan it says that Jesus came to save sinners, and you've done a fine job of reminding me that I am that, because that is truly what I am. But because those that's what I need to be in order to be saved by Jesus, you're just assuring me of my salvation. You see, you could do things like that. So it's not that you necessarily have selective hearing. It's that when those doubts come along... The sign on the door says, get out, keep away, and it has the appropriate written biblical passage to tell Satan to head out. Now, if that's where Stephen Furtick was going with this, but he's not, I would have been in full agreement with him, but he didn't. We continue. No doubt allowed in this room. No fear allowed in this room. No doubt regarding your personal vision that you're supposed to have from God. No negativity allowed in this room. Yeah, no negativity towards the, the specific vision that you claim that you think that you got from God. Put them out. Selective hearing. Yeah, so he's basically telling the people at uh, <clears throat> Elevation that they're to have selective hearing. So here's how the conversation would go. Um, I have had a vision from God, and I believe that God is calling me to solve the global problem of poverty, that he's going to use me as a conduit to actually wipe out poverty on planet Earth. And your parents or your friends look at you and go, you do know that Jesus said that we will always have poverty with us, right? Oh, no. 
don't you be see you're being a hater. This proves this, see, in fact, the fact that you're disagreeing with me and trying to talk me out of it, this proves that my vision's from God. You're just being a hater. I'm going to write up a little sign here. Keep out, stay out, and then right there. See, that's you. that means you. You're a hater, and you're a negative person, and I'm not going to hear it. La, 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 la. Stick your fingers in your ear and go la, 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 la. Right? That's, how they, that's what Stephen Furtick is telling these people to do because you know why? That's what Stephen Furtick does. Stephen Furtick teaches false doctrine. He narcissists every single biblical passage he passage he comes in contact with, and and he knows that he's got some pretty sharp critics out there who are pointing out the way he's mishandling God's word. So what's his solution? I'm going to teach the people here at Elevation Church to have selective hearing and not even listen to any of those haters because I know that God has called me to inspire these people through this narcissistic interpretation of scripture. La, 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 la. Get out. Get out, Satan. You're, you're a hater. Means that sometimes to hear what Jesus is saying. Not in his written word. Remember, this is about your vision. You've got to tune out what others have said. Selective hearing is the ultimate ally in the fight of faith. And I, again, I agree, but he's missed the whole point. Selective hearing means hearing the voice of God in the written word of God, not some unique vision that you think God has laid on your heart. You have got to learn to listen to the voice of Jesus. Right, and that's found only in the written word of God. Who says you can do all things. Through Christ who gives you strength. Now, see, now uh, now we're quoting Philippians out of context. By the way, we, you've heard that used all the time. I I can do all things through him who strengthens me. I mean, wh- I mean, what was the Baltimore Ravens were quoting that, and no weapon formed against us shall prosper as if, you know, Satan's going to form a weapon against the Baltimore Ravens, right? Totally out of context. Listen to this. Uh, Philippians chapter 4, starting at verse 10. I rejoice, this is Paul writing, I rejoiced in the Lord greatly, That now at length you have revived your concern for me. You were indeed concerned for me, but you had no opportunity. Uh, Not that I am speaking of being in need, for I have learned in whatever situation I am to be content. I know how to be brought low, and I know how to abound. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Yet it was this it was it was kind of you to share my trouble and you Philippians yourselves know that in the in the beginning of the gospel when I left Macedonia no church entered into partnership with me in giving and receiving except you only even in Thessalonica you sent me help for my needs once and again not that I not that I seek the gift but that I seek the fruit that increases to your credit I have received full payment and more I am well supplied and have received from Epaphroditus the gifts that you sent a fragrant offering a sacrifice acceptable and pleasing to God and my God will supply every need of yours according to the riches in his glory in Christ Jesus so coming back to the verse then I you know I can do all things through him who strengthens me that's not God's going to give you strength so that you can shut the haters out of your life so that you can achieve some grand vision for your life that God apparently has laid on your heart. No, this is Christ giving you strength in difficult circumstances like persecution or hunger, need, things like that. That's what's being referred to here. So, yeah, <clears throat> the fact that Stephen Furtick here is misquoting the word of God and while at the same time telling you to listen only to the voice of Christ, well, that's just bizarre. You've got to learn to listen to the voice of God. I agree, and I'm only going to find it in God's Word. Who says that you are competent as a, as a minister of the, of the new covenant. Really? What, what verse says that? that? That you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Yeah, I am, and I'm a sinner, too, um, who's been washed and uh, blood-bought uh, as a result of Christ's death on the cross. You get what I'm saying here? An audacious faith. Uh, where in the Bible does it talk about having uh, audacious faith? It doesn't. Will live in your heart, and big dreams will come to pass in your life. And big dreams will come to pass in my life. So he's not teaching you to listen for the voice of God in God's word. He's teaching you to listen to the voice of God that you're supposedly getting inside of your heart. Quick, before we go to the break, <clears throat> from the Reformed Baptist Fellowship Uh, You can find this at reformedbaptistfellowship.org. They have a Spurgeon quote up. 
And uh, the name of their post is God Does Not Give a Fresh Revelation. I find this to be rather cogent and well said and well spoken by Spurgeon. Here's what it says. Spurgeon. <clears throat> now, there are some persons who make a great mistake about the influence of the Holy Spirit. A foolish man who had fancy to preach in a certain pulpit, though in truth he was quite incapable of the duty, called upon the minister and assured him solemnly that it had been revealed to him by the Holy Ghost that he was to preach in his pulpit. Very well, said the minister, I suppose I must not doubt your assertion, but as it has not been revealed to me that I am yet to let you preach, you must go on your way until it is. I have heard many fanatical persons say that the Holy Spirit revealed this and that to them. Now that is very generally revealed nonsense. The Holy Ghost does not reveal anything fresh now. He brings old things to our remembrance. He shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have told you. The canon of revelation is closed. There is no more to be added. God does not give a fresh revelation, but he rivets this, one, this old one. When it has been forgotten and laid in the dusty chamber of our memory, he fetches it out and cleans the picture, but does not paint a new one. There are no new doctrines, but the old ones are often revived. It is not, I say, by any new revelation that the Spirit comforts. He does so by telling us old things over again. He brings a fresh lamp to manifest the treasures hidden in Scripture. He unlocks the strong chests in which the truth had long laid, and he points to secret chambers filled with untold riches. But he comes no more, for enough is done. Believer, there is enough in the Bible for thee to live upon forever. If thou shouldst outnumber the years of Methuselah, there would be no need for a fresh revelation. If thou shouldst uh, live till Christ should come upon the earth, there would be no necessity for the addition of a single word. If thou shouldst go down as deep as Jonah or even, uh, even descend as David said he did into the belly of hell, still there would be enough in the Bible to comfort thee without a supplementary sentence. But Christ says, He shall take of mine and shall show it unto you. Good point. In other words, all these people who are giving us these fresh revelations and telling you to only listen to the voice in your head, they're fanatical. They're fanatics. They're telling you to have audacious faith for the grand vision. They're leading you astray. They're not pointing you to the treasure of Scripture. They're pointing you to the delusions of your own mind. And that has absolutely nothing to do with Christianity. We're up on our first break. If you'd like to email me regarding anything you've heard on this edition or any previous editions of Fighting for the Faith, you could do so. My email address is talkback at fightingforthefaith.com or you can subscribe on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash piratechristian or you can follow me on Twitter. My name there at piratechristian. Quick 